Lord, I stand amazed, stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. Lord, I stand amazed, I stand amazed in your presence. Hallelujah, there is joy, peace, and hope. Oh, there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Oh, I stand amazed. I stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing, there is nothing you cannot do. Oh, I stand amazed, I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, there is joy, peace and hope. Oh, there's no one like you. Jesus, there's no one like you in all the earth, in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things, you're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. Your name. Amen, people. Amen, amen. And uh, amen. It's your favorite program, a chapter a day with your favorite girl, Princess Gleason, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. A chapter a day is brought to you to get to know who you are in Christ, the power you possess, the things you can or cannot do, you should or should not do so that you can spend eternity with God in heaven and enjoy the Christian life here on earth. You desire heaven on earth. We always pray and say, Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? Do we just pray that prayer or we truly desire to experience heaven on earth? If you do, then this is one of the ways to be able to experience heaven on earth. By studying the word of God and knowing what God's word say, says concerning you. And how it can become a practical reality in your life so that you can use it and enjoy it to the fullest. Our Bible party for today is taken from the book of Second Kings chapter 25. And this is the last chapter of this book. Chapter 25. Are you excited? As for me and my house, we are stupendously excited about what we have for you today. So, 
let's go we normally get to pray hand over the session to god after which we do the birthday party and we pray for the birthday people and then we do the bible party so people are you ready it's second kings chapter 25 and it has 30 verses let's get the birthday book okay there you have it we have a number of people who were born today so let's get this bible party bible 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 party on with let's get it on with are you all here if you're here please don't hesitate and don't forget to share us out sharing is caring sharing is preaching indirectly so you can go live yeah we understand but now you can cause someone to still listen to the gospel even without you going live by sharing this out yes that's simple that's you preaching the gospel to your audience indirectly so let's pray and start the session for today and then we get to the normal trend that we have sometimes god can take us out of the regular trend bear with us but for the most part he always gets us to the right place okay so this is the 30th of august i'm sure everyone who is here is ready to have a swell time a swell swell time with me so let's go who is in the building let's know you're there so that we can give you a special shout out we can say hello to you we can say welcome and uh, we can salute you basically so if you're there just let us know just let us know we'll be delighted to welcome you on board we'll be very glad to know you're connected and to say hello to you a very special hello okay so let's go father we thank you for this day that you've made we rejoice and be glad in it we thank you for your faithfulness we thank you for your loving kindness we thank you for your tender mercies we thank you for protection, for provision. We thank you for we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for tender. We thank you for every good and perfect gift that you've given to us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Father, we thank you for fighting our sin and unseen battles. We thank you for keeping us safe and secure to the glory of your name. We thank you for loving us. Even when we're lovable, we thank you for sending your son Jesus. To die on the cross for us, we thank you for making available the blood of Jesus that speaks better things than the blood of bulls and other animals, O oh Lord. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you increase while we decrease so that as we go on with what we have to do for today on the chapter a day, your name and your name alone will be glorified from the start to the end of this episode of a chapter a day. Take preeminence, but now and forevermore. We thank you for this beautiful day you've made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. As we've come before your throne of grace this day, we know you've prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. We've come to sup. We know it's going to be a balanced diet as usual. So we're sure of victory at the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all the saints say a big, big Amen. Welcome, Mom Immaculate and Kume. Oh, you can almost have a name. Oh, it's it's spelled differently. Are you back or see you? Okay, I hope so. <laughs> It'll be a nice thing. Okay, so let's get on with our stuff for today. We we'll first of all have to do the birthday party. And then would now go to the Bible party. Like I've told you already, the Bible party is taken from the book of 2 Kings chapter 25. And it has 30 verses. So 
So let's go. But they roll it. The first person is Mr. Sammy Day. Mr. Sammy Day, we got to meet on social media, Facebook, and he's one person who encourages me on the things I do. Um, we get to talk from time to time. He also loves God, which is a very good thing. The next person is Mam Eliano Ayafor. Um, Mam Eliano, we actually went to the same secondary school together, and then we kind of lost contact. Later on, we met on social media, and finally on our accident association group. She's also a very welcoming, friendly, and uh, nice person. She also likes to make people laugh. Mom Elena can be very funny and then she can be very quiet. Funny and quiet don't seem to go together, but they work with this particular sweet lady I'm talking about. She can be quiet and then she can be very funny. So there are times where she's just all out funny. And there are times where she's just all out quiet. But all in all, she's a great, great person. The next person is Mom Akin Fenwa Yi One Day Bumi. Mom Bumi, actually, we got to connect on Facebook and then eventually on WhatsApp. Yeah, I think so. And we got connected on WhatsApp on a certain group that we're learning, I think it was for ladies only, if I'm not mistaken, or general. It was a general group. We met on it and then I became friends with her because of her comments, her responses to people's comments, her responses to various posts, our mutual friends' posts. I got to see that, oh, this is someone you want to connect with. People that think like you, people that stand for things you stand for, people that believe in things you believe in, those are the kinds of people you want to hang out with. Those are the kinds of people you want to fill your space with. You want to be around you. You want to be close to you. Those are the kinds of people you want, right? So um, I had to connect with her. She's a very nice person as well. Mam Ia Bekondo is the next person. Mam Ia Bekondo actually has a whole lot to do with kidney awareness. Yes. She does a lot with things that have to do with kidney awareness. That was the, I think that was the first time how I got to know her from a mutual friend, Mam Are Echi. So I got to connect with her like that and then um, went on with her awareness campaign and I saw what she was doing and the things she was doing for the less privileged and doing for um, people with kidney um kidney issues and stuff like that she's really one selfless and just i mean i don't know the word to use but amazing human being where she stands up for people who cannot stand up for themselves in that area and so she does a whole lot to make those with kidney issues especially in cameroon make things a little lighter for them than usual thank you so much ma'am Ia Bekono. i pray that god truly and tremendously blesses you and she's also a very very lovely person very welcoming very simple very humble and very down to earth but she's a great great person when it comes to the things she does okay the next person is Mom Awesomeness. I actually met Mom Awesomeness on Whole Life Foundation. So that's a group of young people where we get to learn how to personally develop ourselves, how to grow, how to come out of hurt, how to not get into hurt. Just a lot of things that has to do with self-awareness, self-development, and becoming your better version. And you all know that that particular thing is close to my heart. So when I see people who are running with the same vision, who are running with similar visions, I just can't help it but connect with them. And so Mom Awesomeness is one of those people that I connected with and we all became admins in that group. I wasn't surprised. She is an amazing person. She's an amazing teacher, an amazing coach. And uh, what else does she do again? 
whatever she does she's gonna put in the comment section sometimes there are lots of people who do like similar things on my space and i kind of mix them up with the people but when they come on here they'll definitely put what they do their page their links and all that in the comment section you never know who is watching you never know who might need your goods or services so if you put it in the comment section someone would remember that oh this person was on princess's live and they said they did this they said they are doing this they said they're an expert in this or that that and you'll probably be the first they'll want to get to as opposed to having to look for a neutral person if princess knows this person and says the person is worth it then it's going to be you they'll choose as opposed to just having to go and look for a very neutral person so please don't take this birthday shout outs and uh, stuff for granted when you have an opportunity like i say put your um link in the comment section so that people can go follow you and you just never know what might happen next mm -hmm. you might have an influx of clients coming for your products or service and then the last but not the least is mom benny's apples oma welcome 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 happy birthday fine girl this one can sing she can encourage she has a youtube channel you all go follow her on her youtube channel she'll put the link in the comment section i'm hoping and she's also one of those who supports me totally and completely she's the founder and ceo of a great group of ladies where they encourage each other push each other to be their best and give tips and techniques and methods on how to be your best ever a space where women can shine without feeling uncomfortable that some other person is shining because yeah they all understand that nobody's shine can stop another from shining rather when we shine together we dissipate a lot more darkness and there's much more light the light intensity is brighter and better hmm? so we allow each other selflessly and effortlessly to enjoy each other's space to enjoy each other's shine that is mom benny's oma for you a great wife great mother a great friend a great sister happy birthday to you darling let's take that again happy birthday mr summon day happy birthday mom alieno ayafor happy birthday mom akinfewa yewande bunmi happy birthday mom ia bekondo happy birthday mom awesomeness and happy birthday to mom benny's apples oma so that's it for today and let's get to pray for the birthday people and then we get on with our Bible party. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for this new year. You're adding the lives of your people. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to open the windows of heaven and pour the choices of your blessings upon their lives. Let these blessings and compass them as a shoe run about, so no weapon formed to fashion against them shall prosper. And even as this gifts and compass them round about, it means there's an overflow. And I pray, O oh God, whoever comes in contact with them will literally rub off of the blessings from their lives. There'll be a blessing in their generation and beyond. Lord, let whatever they do be pleasing in your sight, whatever they say be pleasing in your hearing, O oh God. Father, keep them safe and secure to the glory of your name. Lord, I pray, O oh God. That you're going to divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to retrogress in the mighty name of jesus lord let your name and your name alone be glorified throughout their lives in the mighty name of jesus lord cause them to shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day let your will and your will alone be done in their lives oh god father that you take them to the top and cause them to stay there permanently by teaching them strategies 
and techniques that are necessary for them to not only get to the top, but to get to the stop and stay there permanently. Lord, I want to say thank you. I just want to bless your holy name, Father, because you're good. Lord, I give you all the praise. Even as you open and write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, let these stories be a reflection of your grace, your mercy, your love, and your loving kindness over your people. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to open opportunities for them that they will, it will cause them to stand out and not fit in because you call each and every one of us to stand out in our areas of specialty. Lord, that you're going to give them the grace to fulfill purpose, that they will not derail, they will not stray the part, that even at that point where they feel like giving up or backing out, you're going to be there for them and you're going to speak in a clear and loud voice that is saying, this is the way, walk down in it, they won't stray, they won't go off course, they would stay on course and people glorify your Father in heaven through all that is going on in their lives, oh God. Thank you, King of Glory. Lord, I pray that you're going to enlighten the eyes and ears of their understanding, that they will get to know those that they're supposed to be destined to help us to, so that they can strategically position themselves to help these people when the time is right, that they'll be very obedient, and they'll understand that they're just stewards working in God's vineyard. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're also going to open the eyes of all other helpers and destiny helpers, oh God, to be strategically positioned for these people as well. So when they also cry out for help, help is going to be made available for each and every one of them. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Glory, because we know you always, always hear an answer. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to cause these people to be trailblazers, paysetters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that they would do and undo for the kingdom, O oh Lord. Father, that you shut every door and that is not of you and open every door that is of you. And Lord, even though the effect of heaven door is open, there are many adversaries. We pray that you're going to deal with the adversaries even before they get to those doors so that they're going to walk in gallantly and exalt your holy name and enjoy all that which you've prepared for each and every one of them. Lord, I pray that you're going to open the windows of heaven upon their lives and do marvelous things. We cover each and every one of them with the blood of Jesus, that they're going to have a blast of a birthday. Cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, getting favor before God and before men. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that they're going to shine brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Abba Father, because you deserve all our praise. Take preeminence both now and forevermore. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause money to meet money in their pockets, blessings to meet blessings in their lives, favor to meet favor in their lives, even as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor this day. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name we pray, let their gifts make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men, O oh Lord. Father, that they are going to keep shining, you say they're moving from glory to glory. We we'll believe that we we'll hold on to that word. And we we'll trust you to make it a practical reality in the lives of your children. And if per adventure, they'll be here same time next year. They'll come live on the chapter a day to give glory to your holy name and testify of your goodness. Perfect all that concerns them. Give them a sound 126 state. A state of continuous laughter, singing and rejoicing. To the glory of your name. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing and answering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We still good prayers. Amen. 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 With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives, as we pray, let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen, as we have prayed, amen, let it be in the lives, let it be so, amen, 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 in their lives, amen, as we have prayed, amen, let it be in the lives, let it be so, amen, 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 in their lives, amen, as we have prayed, amen, let it be. In the life. 
Amen, people. God bless you tremendously. I may guide and lead you in the right path. May your gifts make a way for you, causing you to stand before kings, not before mean men. Welcome, Mr. Child Elvis. Welcome, ma'am, lovey boo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for being a part of a chapter a day today. Please, like I always say, don't forget to share us out. Sharing is caring, and sharing is you indirectly preaching the gospel to your audience. So, take advantage of it. While we get to learn together, we'll cause other people to join us in the process and learn along with us. We all want to learn together. If the world is made a better place by God, then it will be easier for all of us to live in the world because we all should have learned how God wants us to live here on earth. Right? Or don't you think so? If we all are living up to the standards that God wants by studying his word and knowing what he wants us to do through his word, ain't this place going to be a better place? I think so. I think it would be. So today is 2 Kings chapter 25. It's the last chapter of this book. And tomorrow we'll be getting into a new book. Oh my God, I can't wait. I was thinking tomorrow is the first. No, so we're going to be starting the new book on the 31st. August has 31 days, not 30 days. So, of course, we'll be starting the new book tomorrow. Okay, are you ready? Ready or not, here I come. Second Kings chapter 25. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his hosts, against Jerusalem and pitched against it. And they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged unto the evening. Sorry. Let's take that back. Second Kings chapter 25. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of of the month that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came he and all his host against Jerusalem and pitched against it and they built forts against it round about and the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah and on the ninth day of the fourth month the famine prevailed in the city and there was no bread for the people of the land and the city was broken up and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate between two walls, which is by kings, by the king's garden. Now the Chaldees were against the city round about, and the king went the way toward the plain. And the army of the Chaldees pursued after the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon, to Riblah, and they gave judgment upon him. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him with feathers of brass, and carried him to Babylon. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebu Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house burnt he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Now the rest of the people that were left in the city, and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon, with the remnant of the multitude, did, Nebo, did Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carry away. But the captain of the guard left of the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen. And the people of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases and the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord, did the Chaldees break in pieces 
and carried the brass of them to Babylon, and the pots, and the shovels, and the snuffers, and the spoons, and all the vessels of brass wherewith they ministered, took they away, and the firepans, and the bowls, and such things as were of gold, in gold, and of silver, in silver, the captain of the guard took away the two pillars, one sea, and the bases which Solomon had made for the house of the Lord, the brass of all these vessels was without weight. The height of the one pillar was eight cubits, and the chapter upon it was brass, and the height of the chapter three cubits, and the written work, and promengranates upon the chapter round about, all of brass, and like unto these had the second pillar with written work, and the captain of the guard took sorry sorry. I don't know how that went. Okay, let's go. I got it back. And the captain of the guard took Sariah, the chief priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. And out of the city he took an officer that was set over the men of war, and five men of them that were in the king's presence, which were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host which mustered the people of the land and three score men of the people of the land that were found in the city. And Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, took these and brought them to the king of Babylon to Ribla. And the king of Babylon smote them and slew them at Ribla in the land of Hamart. So Judah was carried away out of their land. And as for the people, that remained in the land of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left, even over them he made Jedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Sephan, Shaphan, ruler. And when all the captains of the armies, they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Jedaliah governor, they came to Jedaliah, to Mizpah, even Ishmael the son of Nathanael, and, and Johanan the son of Kareer, and Serahir the son of Thanumeth, the, Nethophat, the Nethophatite, and Jazanir the son of a Machatite, they and their men. And Jedaliah swayed to them and to their men, and said unto them, Fear not to be the servants of the Chaldees. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. But it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nithanir, the son of Elishama, of the seed of royal, came and men with him and smote Jedaliah that he died, and the Jews and the Chaldees that were with him at Mizpah, and all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the army arose and came to eat. But it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nethanir, the son of Elishamar, of the seed of Royal, came and ten men with him, and smote Jedaliah, that he died, and the Jews and the Chaldees that were with him at Mizpah, and all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the army, arose and came to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldees. And it came to pass in the seventh and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoachin, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, that 
evil, evil Merodesh, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, did lift up the head of Jehoashim, king of Judah, out of prison. And he spake kindly to him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments. And he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. And his allowance was a continual allowance given him of the king, a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. This is the word of the Lord. And all the saints shall say a big thanks be to God. Okay, people. What did you learn? Mm-hmm. A lot of things here about how people take advantage of others, how people win over others. And one thing I know for sure is that he who breaks the hedge, a serpent will bite. And sometimes we so wrath evil in the eyes of God that he just allows us. God doesn't do evil. Evil doesn't come from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from God and Him alone. So sometimes when this evil is happening to us, it's just that God has removed His covering. And so we are vulnerable. We're liable to any kind of attack. That's exactly what was happening to the children of Israel. It's like they just kept repeating the cycle over and over and over and over and over Again and again and again and again. They'll go to God and say they're sorry. They'll cry out. God will send someone to come and save them. Shortly after they're saved, it feels like they're relaxed. They don't have any troubles anymore. They create one. And then go back to eat, to to the world. Start doing those things that God says they shouldn't do. Start doing those things that God says he doesn't like. It's painful. It's painful. They just kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And God, in his loving kindness, will still actually forgive them. Will still actually make provisions. That's what the enemy hates with a passion. He doesn't have an opportunity to make restitution and be sorry for what he did and then get back to being good standing and in right standing with God. He doesn't have that opportunity. So when you see someone who is getting close to get that opportunity and to live their life freely and not be afraid and not be ashamed. He wants to just do something about it. He just wants to do something. But God help us all. That would stay steadfast and God is going to grant us the staying grace. That we're not going to be afraid. We're not going to give up and back out. We don't care how long it's going to take. We're going to wait. Imagine the king just almost at the end where we're reading that they brought him out of prison after how many years and he had to eat at the king's table for the rest of his days and he was given an allowance for the rest of his days. Sometimes some things might just happen to you for a reason, to show God's glory, to show God's power, to show how God is powerful. How much it will allow God to influence our lives the levels and the places he will take us to are beyond mind imagination. And so all these people, they were actually under the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon was winning everybody, possessing lands, taking people away. And then he had people whom he was sending to go and get the children of Israel and he was destroying them, destroying them. Like a group would just come, a set would just come. It would slay them. Boop, 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 boop. And it's done. It was that crazy. He was dealing with people like that. And so they carried all the things that were in the temple. The ones that were good, they took them away. The others that destroyed and just, I mean... I can imagine, sorry people, I can imagine how the temple that Solomon built was at the point in time because some people were destroying things from there, removing things, carrying things and giving to this set of people or giving to those set of people like that. I can imagine 
how the temple ended up being in ruins because the people who were supposed to have been serving God started serving other gods, started um, um, rotting evil in the sight of God. So they were not serving God anymore. I can imagine how it was. Okay. And so they actually overtook Israel, overtook even um, the areas of the Chaldees, overtook many lands, many countries, many cities. And then this is someone who is here telling people that, oh, if you stay and serve the king of Babylon and all these kinds of things, of course, you would, this is what you'll get. And then he goes ahead and and start serving. You know that kind of people. There are people like that in our lives. And some of us, we even know that. Some of us, God has even shown them to us. But for some weird reason, it's just like we feel comfortable leaving those people in our lives. They'll destroy you. They'll destroy you. This guy, um, how they call him again? No, it's Jedal Jed Jedalia who was made um, governor to rule. He, he was there encouraging other people and saying, oh, let's just serve the king of, um, let's just serve the king of Babylon. Let's just serve this guy. Let's not fight him. If we serve him, he's going to be well with us. It's just the same thing, like you're caught up in a situation and they're like, okay, just if you can't beat them, just join them. Even though it's something that is wrong, you too, a child of God, You've become so weary, you've become so tired of fighting and struggling and wanting to get things right so much so that you agree to that. Mm -hmm. You agree to that whole scenario of um, being with, with someone who is not worthy, being in a group that is not right just because you want to fit in or just because of some funny fringe benefits that you're going to get by joining that as opposed to losing your salvation? What if you join that group and then the world ends? What if you join that group and then the trumpet sounds? What if you join that group? What, just what if? They say the Lord might come like a thief in the night. We're so much in the last days to be playing with our salvation. He said, that, no, let's just stay here. If we serve this man, it's going to be well with us. Blah, 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 blah. And it came to pass just seven months after Ishmael arose and smote him. He probably would have been thinking, oh, these guys have already fallen. They're ready to serve the king of Babylon. We're doing great. We're having fun. We're having the time of our life. And then all of a sudden, that person just turns around and kills you. There are people who can bear grudges like that. We know the case of this other guy. Was it Absalom? I don't know. The guy whose sister was raped. I'm not sure. I, I don't want to mix up the names. But the guy whose sister was raped. He harbored anger for years on ending. And he was planning his evil. And finally effected it. There are people like that. Who can hold a grudge against you or against someone that is connected to you and you're the one who ends up suffering the punishment i remembered in the keeper of a Jews baba tv they said that lord deliver me from the consequences of my father or mother's sin deliver me from the consequences of my great grandparents sins yes yes because of something that somebody might have done Another person's holding a grudge against you because maybe it's your family member, because maybe it's your dad, maybe it's your brother. And in my mind, why not just ask the person what's going on? As opposed to assuming and then punishing the person for something that they really didn't do. But these ones, they were bent. They had suffered. They had worked as slaves and all those things. And the guy wasn't enjoying it. So in his mind, it's like, some people would have been saying, have a bread is better than none. No. I want the full bread. Why should I be getting half when I can get the full version? No, I want the full bread. I am going for half. Why should I? When I can get the full thing. So some people settle. 
the, the worst part is marriage, especially when it comes to young ladies. They just settle. Oh, I'm getting old. Nobody's going to talk to me again. Oh, this, 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 this. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm not done. L running left, right, front, back, and center. And you wonder why divorce rates are higher? People say, when our parents, when our, in our parents' time, their parents, like our grand-grandparents, used to look for wives for them. But in our generation, we will cuckoo carry ourselves and go and look for the wives and husbands that we want. And then we get it. We're like, oh, this is my spec. This one match and everything. And we're the ones divorcing more. Our parents are not divorcing that much. And some people give it that, oh, the reason is that our own parents were, um, our own parents were more or less, they were understanding and they, they were bearing a lot of things that we have had an eye opening today not to be able to bear those things. Like some of our parents could be in abusive relationships. They didn't even know that was abuse and so they would stay there. But we would have been enlightened. As soon as we know, we see the sight of it, we run away. Why are we surprised that there are lots of divorces? It also starts from, it also stems from the fact that some people get into marriage because of pressure. Some people get into marriage for the very wrong reasons. And so a lot of people don't even take time to wait on God. We wait on God for a lot of things. We wait on God to answer us when it comes to career, when it comes to every other thing. But when it comes to marriage, it's like we just want to choose on our own. It's like God is not forthcoming. God is not bringing. So there is this story I'm reading by Precious Anoa. And it's really good. It's called The Sensitive Woman. And she's showing us in the lives of people, the things that God can do through women who are sold out, who have decided that they would serve God. And God is using them, be it in their job, be it in their career, be it in their field, be it in their calling. Whatever area these women are, they're in different sectors and God is using them in those sectors mightily. Some of them went through a rough patch. So God is using their mess as a message to change lives and to impact lives. I always say this, that sometimes we don't go through stuff because we will not have been able to overcome. Mm -mm. We go through it because God wants us to learn the lesson so that when we want to minister to someone, we'll minister right. Oh yeah, that's the whole idea. God wants us to minister right. And that's why he makes us go through some things. Because I used to always wonder the scripture that says, Peter, the devil wants to see you, but I've prayed for you that when you come back, you'll be, I'm like, God, what is, what is that? What are you trying to do? Like, why did you not just pray that Peter should not fall? You're like, no, you're going to fall, darling. But when you come back, you'll be able to bring others out. You get so there are some fallings that you fall and you come out. But there are some that you fall like Judith and you will never see the light of day. So God is hoping and trusting that you listen to the ones who have already gone ahead and experienced it and tell you that this one, no, don't go this way. It ain't going to favor you. That's what God is doing. <laughs> okay, people. So don't fret. God is with you all the way. Always just check if you're in right standing with God. If you're in right standing with God, be rest assured. No matter what is happening to you, God is involved and is going to end up in victory. It doesn't matter how you go about it and go about it. It's going to end up in victory. As long as God is still in that boat, as long as Jesus is still in that boat, you are going to get to the place where he says you should get to. Okay. And so this person was removed from prison all of a sudden. And the Bible says that uh, when your ways please the Lord, he'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. Do you hear that? He'll make even your enemies, those people that hate you, that those people that don't like you, he'll make them to be at peace with you. That is something. That is something. 
It's worth thinking about. It's worth looking into. Thank you, Lord God, because I know you always hear an answer. Let his word be a lamb unto our feet and a light to our part, guiding us to the place where you want us. Lord, that we're going to hold on to your word every single time. Knowing that your word is true, your word is here, and amen. You, you're not man, you never lie. Lord, we pray that you're going to bless us in a very special way. And bless your children who are going to stumble upon this video. That you're going to open their eyes, enlighten them, O oh God. And in the end, all glory be given unto your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you all for giving us an excellent session on the chapter a day. We appreciate it and we don't take it for granted. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. I always get to say I love you so, so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates. Each time we we'll upload a new video or we get to go life just like this please always get to be a part we really appreciate you for giving spending this time of your life with us for giving us this much of your life to be a part to we pray oh god that you're going to guide and direct us never to frustrate the grace of god in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen Tomorrow is another day. Let's get on. It's the last day of the month. And it's the first chapter of Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 1. People, get to read ahead of time. And let's come back here tomorrow and have a super duper time together. Okay? Please, guys, don't miss out. Don't miss out on what we have for tomorrow. It has been a lovely day. I hope that you all are also going to get a splendid day. For the rest of your day, for those who are just starting, I hope it's going to be sweet. And for those who are at the end, just like I am, I pray that God is going to make it beautiful for you. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. So I hope I did say hello to everybody who was a part of this today. I hope I really did tell everybody hello and God bless. I hope I did. Okay. I hope, I hope, I hope. Yes, Mr. Chalvis was here. Mom Judith, Fominyam Judith, Mom Maricol Zoafar, Mom Lovibo, and one of my Thai friends. And then we also had Mom Immaculate Kume. And like I said, Mom Immaculate Kume, are you back, I hope I hope so. Chamaka. <laughs> ciao, ciao, people.